بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد Welcome again once again to another Sidawa Live um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to our Muslim audience and greetings and welcome to those who are not yet Muslims Today we bring you another interesting topic is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is he the last prophet and messenger of God? Is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, a messenger, indeed the last prophet and messenger of God? That is the topic of today's show. You're welcome to join in, Muslims and non-Muslims. I'd like to hear from Muslims as well. Why do you think? Assalamu alaikum, uh, Hashim. Um, how are you both? Alhamdulillah. Just a brief introduction and some house rules. So the topic is open to everyone to discuss about this uh, particular individual in history of which there is no doubt whatsoever. Whether you are Muslims or non-Muslims, you do not dispute that Muhammad وسلم, lived in Mecca and preached the message of unity of worshiping God. Being the prophet of God, he explained to people that none is worthy of worship except Allah, God alone. And he showed in his life, in his teaching, in his actions, that he is indeed the messenger of God through his evidences, through his teachings, through his character, through his interactions, through his dealings of the people and the way he preached and the way he actually demonstrated to the people that, yes, this is the finality of prophethood. So we are welcoming everyone to have their, you know, if you want to say something about the Prophet ﷺ, that you want to show your love, you want to express your love of the Prophet Wasallam. you're more than welcome to join us today, Muslims. Tell us what inspires you, what of the teachings and the character and the role of the Prophet Wasallam inspires you. Share with us and tell us briefly, of course, because we want to give a chance to as many uh, brothers and sisters as possible. How has this Prophet changed your lives, your family's lives? How do you think the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has indeed changed the whole world? indeed change the, the perspective, the reality of how the world should be. If the Prophet ﷺ was not born, if he wasn't the messenger sent, would the world be now as it is? Or would it be totally different? Also non-Muslims, you are welcome to, you know, come in and tell us what are your objections? What stops you from accepting him as the Prophet and Messenger of God? Why do you not consider that he is indeed a messenger sent by God? Is it because the lack of evidences? Is it because you have something to do about his character that you don't agree with, with your particular understanding of ethics and morality? Or is it something that you weigh and you know you measure him according to the uh, morality and ethics and the understanding of today's uh, in reality in terms of how people view um, you know, the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his character, we would like to hear from you. We would like to have an informal discussion. I mean, this is going to be an open chat. Um, feel free to you know, express yourself. No one's going to get offended because this platform is provided to definitely do that where you will be able to express yourself without feeling that you are somehow being insulted or mocked or being offended whatsoever. So this is one of the house rules here in Esidawa live shows. No mockery is allowed, no sarcasm is allowed, no insult is allowed. Express your views openly and plainly. You might totally disagree with us and we might disagree with you. But this is a healthy discussion where we can learn from each other. We can have this tolerance that is so important in this society where people have different backgrounds in their faith, in their culture, in their upbringing. Not an issue. We can still live together in this life mutually understanding each other. So this is the most important house rules. If you start, you know, mocking, insulting and showing sarcasms or going off the topic, I'm afraid we would have to ask the admin to remove you and you can, you're more than welcome to join when you actually can behave and follow the house rules. So I'm going to just move on very quickly to Brother Ijaz. You can see his Twitter handle at Ijaz Detrini. So join and subscribe and follow him. Um, so Brother Ijaz, Assalamu Alaikum. I just want to ask you. Alaikum Assalam. What do you understand about this topic, Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet? Is there anything that you want to, you know, particularly highlight in terms of a philosophical understanding of this topic, 
or you want to share your own thoughts. For example, I would personally want to understand why would indeed there be a need for a final prophet of God? If there was a final prophet of God, what characteristics or what attributes do we expect from a prophet? Mm -hmm. And what sort of evidence do we expect these prophets to show that he's indeed the final messenger of God? Not only that, the prophet that we are claiming to be the final messenger, did he live his life accordingly? Did the teaching that he was proclaiming to people, did he demonstrate that? So, go ahead. And assalamu alaikum to uh, brother so, Mike. Alaikum. Welcome to our show. Mike. Thank you guys. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. 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 So, assalatu wa salamu ala Allah. So, I particularly love this topic because every Muslim has a close relationship or should have a close relationship with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, when we ask the question, why should there be a last prophet? We have to define what a prophet is in the first place. We do distinguish between messengers and prophets. And so the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was both a messenger and a prophet. What does that mean? It means that he received revelation and taught it and he, uh, he uh, dispensed laws, uh, new laws at least, to the people of Arabia by the mercy of Allah. So he was a leader, he was an imam, means that he led them just, not just in communal affairs, but in theological, theological affairs as well. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, why did he have to be both a messenger and a prophet? And why does he need to be the last one? I, I ask this question particularly because there's a brilliant book called uh, 1492, I think, The Year the World Began. And so in that book, it basically starts off by showing, oh, wait a second, the known world by the, by the 15th century had basically become very close to Islam. Uh, Islam was making headway into Europe, alhamdulillah, and it was spreading throughout Southeast Asia. So Islam over the centuries as introduced by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has shown itself to be very amenable. It takes people's culture into consideration. It takes their language, their practices, their familial values, and it unites them upon that common thread that if we submit in worship to the one true creator, our societies and civilizations will be successful. And so when I look at the character of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the message that he brought, the Sharia which he introduced, the, the body of lords and the way at which we understand them, I find this to be not just cohesive and coherent from one century to the other. It seems as if this message uh, is applicable to all eras and all peoples. In fact, I don't think that there is any culture, people or group that Islam disqualifies or rejects or the message can't be brought to. I mean, even in the Quran, you look at it, you find that the message even considers people who do not even have the strength to stand up and pray. You can pray on your side, you can pray sitting down, just with the movement of your head and even, uh, as the scholars have deduced, with the movement of your eyes. So God in Islam and with the message that he has brought through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, caters to every person in society. Not a single individual can be disenfranchised. And when I look at what his family followed up with, some of his uh, daughters in particular and his wives, may Allah be pleased with them all, were some of the greatest scholars that this ummah or this nation has ever seen. So the message is not just universal, it is transcendental. It raises people's understanding and it brings them together. And for that, for me at least, tells me that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not just one of the greatest men of all time, but that he was sincerely and truly a prophet of God. Jazakallah khair. Before I go to Hashim, I just want to remind all our guests that are joining in. We are just doing the introduction first, and then we will come to you one by one in turn. So Hashim, um, your thoughts. Yes, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalatu wassalamu ala nabi al-kareem. Amma bad. Uh, so the Prophet um, so the last messenger of um, of, of this uh, deen, I mean Islam, and the last messenger of of, of for mankind and uh, the, the jinn. This is clearly mentioned in Surah Al-Hazab in, in the Quran, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walakin Rasulullahi wakatimun nabiin wa kan Allahu bi kulli shayin alima." This is in chapter thirty-three, verse number forty where it clearly states that but he is the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets and Allah is ever all aware of everything. 
So we have a clear confirmation of the last messenger. Of course, there were many prophets and messengers before the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Islam did not begin uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is something that uh, people somehow misunderstand that Islam came with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that's um, everything else before that was in Islam. Islam means submission to uh, submission to one God. So the only God worthy of worship is that one God who is indivisible, immutable, and the almighty God, whose name is Allah, and he has other 99 names. And this is clearly mentioned in the Quran as well. And anyone who says that they believe in Allah prior to that, and they believe in the prophets and the messengers of their time, and the ones before them, they were considered as uh, Muslims. In other words, those people who submit to one God, they are known as Muslims. So for example, People say that uh, Moses was uh, was Jewish and Abraham was. Some people say Jewish, but he wasn't. All these all these prophets who came before, including Jesus Christ, they all worship one true God. They did not say a God was divisible like a Trinity or any other thing, uh, a Unitarian God or something. It was always a Unitarian God, and this is clearly mentioned in the Shema uh, of uh, the one that Moses mm. proclaimed. In Deuteronomy 6 4, and also Jesus repeated the same Shema in Mark chapter 12 29 when he was asked what is the most important commandment. So it's very important to understand that the message of God was revealed from the first uh, prophet, that is Prophet Adam, and it carried on for many, many generations and many centuries until it culminated with the Prophet Muhammad, sallam, who is the last of the messengers and the prophets. Now, as, as I've already mentioned, the ayah which confirms this is Khatim uh, al-Nabin. He's the seal of the prophethood. And this is clearly stated in the Quran. And also the Prophet's hadith says, La Nabiya Ba'da in his uh, Sahih hadith. In, 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 uh, and this is also another evidence for it. So the message, I mean, uh, Brother Mansur and um, Marshall already covered most of the things that he's not only a prophet and a messenger, didn't only deal with theology, but he was an outstanding uh, father, husband, um, statesman. He was um, a commander and a general in his army as well. So he dealt with all aspects of life, be it your financial, be it your economical, be it your family life, be it your social life, be it the uh, military um, or um, from the social aspect or the political aspect. He had been, the, he, he had been a role model for all of these um, different aspects. And also from the message of the last passenger, uh, which is the Quran, which is the last message to mankind, it also, when it speaks, it speaks in a universal language. So for example, the previous messengers, when they spoke, uh, as you can see from the Bible, it says, here or Israel, in the case of both Moses and Jesus. Yes, so when they spoke, they spe spoke to a particular, uh, tr a particular nation, the nation of Israel, the Bani Israel, and these were the children of uh, Jacob and so on. So this is clearly for no, not universal because they were not uh, known as the chosen people at that time. And the message was primarily for them. However, when you read the Quran, it says, Yeah, Ayyuhan Nas, it says, Hear all people. And this shows the universality of his message, that his message is universal for all for all of mankind and, and the genus one. So it's, it's something very clear in the Quran as to who was, was his audience. It wasn't just the Muslims, it wasn't just the Arabs, yes, but it was all of mankind. So Alhamdulillah, I think inshallah, as we progress in this um, discussion, we'll probably understand more about the last messenger and the prophet who is also called Rahmatul Alameen or the mercy to mankind, one of his titles as well. Jazakallah khairan. Um, before I move on to Mike, just be with us, Mike, and um, Yossi is here. Welcome, both of you. Uh, wa alaikum salam. And we see that we have Fred with us. I think I'll go to Fred first to give him the opportunity. The reason why, because from a non-theistic perspective, I would like to hear Fred or Stop Spamming's perspective about uh, this man, what we call Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So, Fred, welcome to our show. And would you like to share your thoughts on this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa from your perspective hi guys thank you thanks for having me 
I hope you're all doing well and you're handling COVID as well as everybody else and you're not affected by it personally. Um, I don't want to talk so much about the person. I just want to ask two questions which are logical questions. Um, because we, we can't, there's, there's no, we need to presuppose because there's no evidence for the existence of this particular God or Muhammad or that there's a relationship between them. So we need to presuppose it. Now, if I look at the claim that this is the last prophet, and if I look at the claim in the Quran that every nation gets a prophet and no nation shall be judged before a prophet has not warned it, we have new nations all the time. Like when Czechoslovakia broke up into Czech Republic and Slovakia, two new nations. Did they get their messenger? Did they get a prophet? No, they didn't. So why would Muhammad be the last prophet if the Quran says every nation gets their prophet? So this is a contradiction in my eyes. The second question I have is why is it that not every human being is a messenger or a prophet? Because whether, okay, whether you're a Nabi or, or a Rasul, it doesn't really matter. You have the full message, which I, as a normal person, don't have. That's why I need a messenger and, and a prophet. Why does, does the creator, the best creator, the, the most perfect creator, not create everybody a messenger or a prophet so that everybody gets the full message and doesn't need any other messengers? And those are just the two questions I have, logical questions. Sure. Thank you, Fred. These are indeed excellent questions. Um, and it's not like um, the questions that, you know, they don't have any real meaning or, or purpose. I think, you know, they're very, very, very good questions indeed. So your first question was, it, the Quran seems to suggest there will be, I mean, this is your point. I'm going to give uh, the panelists to answer your question, but I just want to highlight what I've understood from your question, that there will be new, uh, there will be prophets or messengers to every nation. Um, but I think there's a clear misunderstanding of this, in, in my understanding, clearly that, you know, prophets were sent to the previous nations and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last and final of them and he's sent to all of the nations. So any new, new nation that comes and any nation states breaks apart, I mean, he is indeed the nation prophet to all of these nations, millions of nations if they were to come in the future. The other, I mean, this is my take, I mean, I'll get, get uh, the panelists to explain a bit further. Why, so your second question is why is not everyone a messenger of God? Why do you need a particular individual to convey the message uh, rather than everyone receiving the message from God? So I'd like, uh, like to start with Ijaz, uh, if you don't mind answering the questions, and I'll go to um, Hashim. Mm -hmm. So I, I do like the very first question. Uh, it's a foundational question, an argument from first principles. So I actually want to thank Fred uh, for asking that question. So the, the question uh, branches out to sub-questions. So how, how do we reason with this? But in the first place, I think last week we, I had went through this process already, but I'll quickly summarize it. We do know that almost all civilizations had some conception of a god Almost all civilizations believed that they were created in the first place. So there does seem to be some kind of basic universal message that all nations generally seem to have had. So, uh, for example, before people, sorry, before the Europeans came to the New World, the, the people in the New World already believed in God, already had their own religions, and many of them coexisted with the understanding that there would most likely come a savior or a messiah in some capacity to bring them uh, guidance, at least in this life. So from this perspective, it would seem strange to me that if a God did not exist, that most societies uh, in the pre-Columbus era already accepted this God. So there does seem to be a universal thread which uh, links all of these societies together. Now, if you ask the question, what would a society look like or a nation look like if they accepted uh, Islam uh, as we understand it today? Well, they would have to believe that God sends prophets or messengers, which almost all civilizations do believe in. They would have to accept that there were non-corporeal beings that we can interact with, which again, almost all civilizations seem to accept. There would also have to be uh, the understanding that there is a uh, classes of people in society or learned people that would dispense the sacred knowledge. That seems to also have been universally understood. Uh, the, the significance of the family unit and how it's uh, arranged, that again also seems to be universal. So when someone asked me the question, what will it look like if there, uh, if 
uh, all these disparate nations in the pre-Columbus era looked like if they had the same message, then it would reflect exactly what we see today in history. So I don't think that one has to presuppose anything. I think the uh, the, the evidence is quite easily demonstrable. Uh, what we would say, however, is that as Muslims, we do believe that the people did eventually uh, could not corrupt the religion, but they allowed their cultural practices and they brought their ignorance into the various belief systems that they had. And this corruptibility is what we find and see, again, universally throughout almost all civilizations and societies. And this is something that the Quran warns against. So I would say, no, there is a clear common thread that unifies almost all peoples upon the earth. And then this uh, definitely indicates that there is some specific God that we need to worship. Uh, maybe Brother Hashim Omansu wants to add on to that. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, gen gentlemen, is it possible to come in before sure. Hashim? Go ahead, Mike. Because I feel like mm -hmm. anything anything that I say that I don't pick up on, Hashim is, is obviously more qualified that, to, that's to fine, come Mike, straight that's after. That's fine, that's fine. Go ahead. More than welcome, Mike. Go ahead. Are you good for me to go now, yeah? Um, obviously, answering the questions, I mean, me personally, from a perspective of where I've come from, I would turn around and say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is is 100% correct in his revelations that he will be the last prophet simply on the basis that you have now had the complete message everything that is is needed now to spiritually align to become one with god and 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 he, you know pray and give all greater gratitude that way has been given there's n what else can you add it's a complete revelation there's there's no more for it to be added there's no reason mm -hmm. to have further prophets the message is there for you to read to break down assimilate and take on it's up to you now as an individual to take it yeah or leave it it's your choice and that's the important part here. it's a choice so you have to choose okay with regards to why not anyone or everyone can become prophet or, or messenger I mean you have to look at it from a logical point of view is that you have to have the discipline and the the, the character build to be able to take such a responsibility first of all pro the Prophet Muhammad didn't just happened to just get this information he had to be disciplined in some way he you know in the way it's being read how you interpret it, it's up to you that he went to a cave and received his first revelation in quiet and darkness so he was he was clearly meditating and that's a practice that takes a lot of discipline to achieve anything significant so for anyone to become a prophet or messenger it's it, that's not how it works it clearly will not work that way you have to be disciplined to be able to hear the message or see it however you want to interpret it um, and obviously then you have to be the kind of person built with the shoulders of such complexity and responsibility to be able to lead and to go forward trying to get that message across in a way that people a can understand it b and b that will be able to hear it and then take on your advice or not you know that 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 not everyone can be given that i'm sorry but it's like saying why can't everyone have a degree it's just it's just not going to work and that's a much lower form of of becoming a prophet or a messiah that's that's all i want to add at this point so obviously brother mahashim has a lot more from the quran and himself and his, his knowledge then obviously I'll, I'll give way to that now thank you mike hashim yeah mashallah barakallah uh, thank you brother mike uh, really interesting aspect from someone who's just accepted Islam very recently, I would say. So thanks for your input and really appreciate that. Uh, as for Fred, uh, yeah, good question. But I think before you come to the conclusion whether uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the other messengers were sent to all the nations and all, I think it's, it's quite important for you first to focus on whether there is a God and if God exists, because regardless of what we say, uh, you're just going to say that, oh, it doesn't make sense that that doesn't, um, I don't believe that and so on. So, I mean, have a look around, see if everything was created uh, by itself or someone created it. Look at the universe, look at all these signs that you see in front of you. Uh, so anyway, with regards to your particular question, I mean, there is, uh, there were definitely messengers and prophets sent before to all the nations. What does that mean? That means before the advent of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, there were messengers and prophets sent to other places and other nations, as is clearly indicated in the Quran. Uh, as for these new countries coming into being, they, were, they came after the advent of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, thousand years, 1400 years after. So I don't think 
you're looking at the same thing. It's kind of uh, anachronistic when you look at uh, the breakup of Czechoslovakia, uh, sorry, of uh, Yugoslavia and so on. Uh, so there is a clear uh, passage in the Quran. I would like to highlight that is in chapter three, verse one seven nine, where it says, "Allah would not leave the believers in a state you are in presently until He separates the evil from the good." Nor would Allah reveal to you the unseen, but instead Allah chooses of his messengers whom he wills. That's quite important. Allah chooses of his messengers whom he wills. So believe in Allah and his messengers. And if you believe and fear him, then for you is a great reward. So Allah clearly specifies that he's the one who chooses messengers. So it's not like Prophet Muhammad or Moses or Jesus. They wanted to become messengers and say, yes, I now declare myself as a messenger. These individuals, these chosen ones, these prophets and messengers, they were elected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So until the age of 40, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know that he was a prophet. Yes. Until that an angel Gabriel came to him in the cave of Hira and he declared to him, the message of Allah and that's when he realized that this that he has a special role to play so it is not like these individuals they chose themselves or self-appointed themselves to carry out this heavy task which is not a not an easy thing to do if you look at every uh, the, uh, the story and the biography of every prophet and messengers they went through a very tough time yes nearly death they had to go through nearly um, uh, such a tough time that they had to face it was a matter of life and death at many many as uh, uh, at many junctions during their lifetime. And there's another ayah in the Quran which also highlights this is Surah Al Hajj, verse number 75. It says, Allah chooses from the angels, messengers, and from the people. Indeed, Allah is all hearing. With regards to your message going to all the nations, I mean, do you really need prophets and messengers in this day and age of information? You don't. I mean, we got the internet, you can read about every prophet and messenger on the internet. You got the television, you got lots of other mediums through which the message is, is carried forward today. So, after the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, passed away, whose duty it is to carry out and propagate that message? It is the message of the believers, the Muslims. So they will be the ones who will carry the message, which we call da'wah. Yes, invitation to the message of Islam. Invitation to believe in Allah and his Rasul and his books and angels and so on. So it is also a part of our duty to propagate this message and there are many mediums so i'll give you a hadith which is quite interesting it's one of the actual i would say it's a miracle in a, in, in a sense sorry this prophecy itself because this was mentioned at a time when islam was in its infancy when islam when the when the muslims were surrounded by the enemies the Quraysh, yes the christians the jews who were all basically the enemies of the muslims at that time so they were uh, only a small fraction of what these other religions were that and in his infancy when the Prophet وسلم, clearly states uh, this particular hadith which I will just read to you this is in Musnad Ahmed number 16509 Tamim Ad-Dari reported the, the Prophet وسلم, said this matter will certainly reach every place touched by night and day Allah will not leave a house or, res or residence, except that Allah will cause the religion to enter it, by which the honorable will be honored and the disgraceful will be disgraced. Allah will honor the honorable with Islam and he will disgrace the disgraceful with unbelief. Yes, now there is a deeper meaning to this. What does it mean to honor and to disgrace? That means if you follow the message, the true message of Islam, yes, you will be honored in the hereafter. And those who will actually reject it, they will be in a state which will be of uh, of, of eternal damnation. And this because uh, in the Quran, Allah says the only religion acceptable is Islam. And what is Islam? Submission to one God and submission to his, his will and obedience to his uh, uh, worship. Sorry, uh, uh, his will and worship only. And this is clear. So we see that this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which says Islam will enter in every house. What does that mean? That means the message of Islam will be delivered to every single corner, where there is day and where there, where there is day or where there is night. And in every house it will enter. Now look around today with the mass media that we have today of both television, uh, of, of radio prior to that, then the television, and now with the internet. Yes, all this technology has allowed Islam and the message of Islam to be delivered to every house. 
and the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned this 1400 years ago when Islam was still in its infancy. A beautiful prophecy of the Prophet, last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Okay, Jazakallah Khairan. Before I give Fred a um, chance to speak, I just want to add some <coughs> thoughts on this very quickly. So um, this is what the Quran actually says. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاشْتَنِبُ التَّغُوبِ This is in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 36. Um, so Allah says He has raised, this is a past tense, in every nation, Ummah, a messenger, inviting them to worship Allah and avoid the false gods. So it is not what you have understood that you know God will be sending in the future and all the time a new prophet. This is talking about as the revelation came to the Prophet Islam, Allah is explaining that in the past he has raised his appointed messengers to all nations because he doesn't punish a nation or, uh, or a group of people unless he tells them what is required of them because this is the basic requirement of justice. You don't punish someone without telling them what they're supposed to do. So Allah doesn't punish them and he actually sends the guides and the warners um, and, and if they disbelieve and reject and of course uh, they become deserving of, of, of the punishment of God. Um, so your question, contradictions that you mm. assume it's there is actually non-existence. It doesn't mean that God will continuously send the Prophet and Messenger. Indeed, the Quran clearly says that God has made Prophet Muhammad Islam the final messenger from his time until the end as Mike already highlighted because Allah God has perfected and completed his religion so once it is complete you don't need another prophet and a messenger so even if nation states break apart and new nations form the message mm -hmm. of Islam that God wants to give to people so that they can abide by this guidance is all completed you don't need a new prophet or a messenger to tell them what to do in fact the Islam is such that uh, I'm sure Fred you know there are analogical deductions that can be made which is a source of Islamic law if even if there's no clear-cut indications in the Quran or the statements of the Prophet because you can make this analogical deductions or chaos and this is how in matters of whether it's a cloning or euthanasia you name it Islam can give you a ruling based on the two original foundations uh, of there and just want to highlight a point I mean I, I rather um, like you to join in another show uh, with us again on the very question of existence of God because when you say there is no proof or evidence for the creator I mean this is your opinion there are hundreds and thousands of people who are convinced that they have you know received the evidence and, and they have received the proof uh, and they're convinced uh, and convincing to them perhaps the evidence that you seek is not something that is convincing to you and that's probably we have we'll discuss in another show so your, your question about the last point um, why there's no need for why, why doesn't everyone get the same message I mean not everyone is meant to be the guide not everyone is meant to lead the nation I mean this is a role and, and, and a duty to particular individuals so when God chooses a prophet he, or a messenger he chooses with his wisdom in whom he thinks and after training them to place this message so he can actually lead the people and guide the people you don't need everyone to become a guide we don't need everyone to be the recipient of revelation um, this is not how God has been dealing with in his wisdom okay so Fred You've had several perspectives from us. Um, share your thoughts of what you've heard. Okay, I don't want, to, but you know that I don't want to make this into a long discussion again. So I'm no just problem. going to take your opinions, um, and I'm going to take them and and say thank you very much for your opinion. Um, my opinion is that all you've done is opened up a lot of, of contradictions. Um, indeed, I, I like your suggestion um, to look at the basics. All right, to, to look mm -hmm. where, where do we start? So. Um, is there really evidence? What kind of evidence? What are we talking about if we say this is evidence? And I think that's a very, very good start um, because here we're jumping right into, you know, presuppositions and, and things like that. So I'm just going to leave it here. Thank you very much for your opinion. Um, Thank you thanks for very much for, us for uh, taking us and I'll, I'll leave you with the other guests. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of things to discuss and then I will keep an eye out for the for the next topic. Thank sure. you, guys. Uh, you're more, um, mm -hmm. welcome join us and, and, and join us again um excellent points that was raised with questions and yossi welcome to the show it's, it's been quite some time thank you yes yes assalamu alaikum i uh, i'm very well thank you we've been doing well as well i'm sorry i haven't been uh, appearing on the shows recently due to uh, some complications uh, that prevented me from coming on but uh 
I'm uh, I'm happy to be here once again, Subhanallah, and uh, I look to I look forward to attending more shows in the future along with this one. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Those of uh, our guests um, who don't know Yossi, I mean, mm. you, perhaps you think Yossi is a Muslim in his vocabulary mm. and the way he speaks. Um, Yossi, um, just quickly introduce yourself um, uh, and then carry on. I am a, I am not a Muslim. I am actually a practicing uh, Orthodox Jew. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I'm uh, very much, uh, I believe that uh, along with the general orthodox opinion regarding Islam in Judaism is that Islam is also a monotheistic religion. Muslims have a certain classification called Chasid ibn uh, Umos by way of belief, right? Chasid ibn Umos means pious among the nations because their religion falls under the seven Noahide laws but has some differentiation. Regardless, they still believe in the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abraham, you know, Abraham Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Alve, Aleim Shalom. And uh, yeah. So um, that is why I come on the show, and we uh, we generally uh, he, you know uh, I'm happy to propagate uh, monotheism, and the uh, honesty that was also you. Thank you, thank you for thoughts and thoughts for joining. Um, I do uh, I do want to make a point about the uh, oh please prophets, please so go why. ahead Don't interrupt go yeah. ahead. So the reason why God chooses Nevi'im and prophets to do works instead of just making all of us messengers is because of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Subhanahu Wa Taala prefers a certain hierarchy as comp you know he prefers a certain structure okay so Allah, you know it, it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to essentially see you know a sort of top-down hierarchy instead of a massive all-encompassing you know decision to make every single person receive the same message and the reason for this is is because for example after Adam Harishon Right, in which is Adam, right? You know, uh, you know, was was uh, essentially forced out of the you know Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala no longer would essentially reveal its covid his glory to every single you know to every single person, right? As essentially Adam had interacted with him, so he chooses certain prophets to form a hierarchy, which he views as the most perfect hierarchy to bring various things, such as you know just you know general religious splendor into these sorts of kingdoms, right? As essentially it shows a sort of you know system of representation, right? So as an angel represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, a king or a, or a prophet, right, who leads the nation, right, is representing his people in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, essentially the Gashmias representing the, the Luchnias, right? It's why prophets, right, have prayed that, you know, some people will be let out of, you know, Jahannam and go into Gan Eden, and then they go into Gan Eden, which is, you know, sorry, yeah, they, which is they go into the Jannah, you know what I mean? So essentially they are representatives before the Kultus Prabhu for their nation, right, or for their people, uh, or, the, you know, the, the people that they're being to, their companions, I guess you'd say, just as Muhammad is representative for the Sahaba, right? Uh, and, um, yeah, that is why the Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chooses this sort of hierarchy as opposed to making everybody else like a messenger. Thank you indeed for sharing your thoughts. Ijaz, do you want to say something? Yeah, so briefly in Surah 67, Al-Mulk of the Qur'an in verse uh, 1 and 2, quickly, <clears throat> Allah says in the Qur'an, Blessed is the one in whose hands rests all authority, and he is the most capable of everything. So Allah is the best one to make decisions for us as mankind. Verse 2 says, and this is the important one, he is the one who created death and life in order to test which of you is best in deeds, and he is the almighty, all forgiven. And in Quran Surah 21, uh, verse 107, it tells us that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent as a mercy to all of the worlds. So yes. what do I mean by these three passages? The idea I'm trying to get at is simply this. If everyone was a prophet and we disagreed in interpreting the law, then there was no one to test in the first place because we all have that personal relationship with Allah. We see, uh, we get revelation, we get direct guidance, and so it removes the uh, the ability to be tested because we are aware that God does exist and that these are realities which uh, we cannot dispute. On the other hand. I will not plainly say not every person is capable of being a messenger. You know, uh, I, I think even Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to paradise. I think he said that in the New Testament. That was to tell you that generally speaking, we're not cut from the same cloth. I know that I'm not a great leader. I can't lead a nation of people. 
I'm not the kind of person who can raise an entire nation and lead them to success. Not everyone is built the same way. So when God chooses prophets and he raises them from people around us, it is to show that these are the best of people. And because they are the best of the people, these are the people that we should imitate. These are the people that we should trust and listen to. So the idea that we all should have a personal revelation from God and in that way then you know it, it doesn't seem to make sense yes we will get awareness of God but despite not having revelation being sent to me I am aware of God and I look at greater and better people so alhamdulillah for Islam I think the message of Islam here is quite cohesive and coherent and I do pray that uh, brother stop spamming returns inshallah at a later point to discuss the topic Jazakallah khairan, um, Ijaz. I'm now going to go around um, each of our guests. Michael is with us. I think this is the um, name. Welcome to our show. All right, I just wanted to tell all y'all, thank y'all, man. I've been uh, I've been reading a lot more on the Quran and trying to study. And I just wanted to get on and tell y'all thank you. I've been using a lot of y'all uh, discussions and everything. I've been waiting to say hi. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, indeed. Um, that was it, man. Thank no you. No problem. Thank you. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to now go to who is next? Hamad. I'll just go in turn those who've been well, waiting. Well, and well, 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 uh, thank you, all brothers, Mahasim Mijaz, and all Muslim brothers for the good dawa that you are doing. I'm brother of you from Dubai. I usually uh, saw so all your videos and all channels from Hamza all the channels and I'm happy for everything that I learned a lot from you guys uh, and inshallah will be a da'wah man with you guys inshallah Allah would you like to share something that you want to share with the whole world in terms of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, as the miracles that he got as the stuff uh, like what he did what the quran and how it was revealed i'm an arab and i know how arab speaks so the quran is very unique um like say like how i could say speaking or uh like a literature a literature or something that's a unique no one made no one can make like it this is the but the the miracle of the Quran that no one can make him like to certain the Quran um, or, or remember, can someone remember me of the ayah that no one can uh, no one can make a no one can make a copy of it what it was when a super like it are you referring to that yeah ayah 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 um, at the old time of Arabs, they were known that their poet, they were talking like each other in poetries, like they were massive and Arabic masters. So no one could, uh, when they saw the Quran and how it's how it is spoken, they were like, how did he got this knowledge? Well, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was literate, literate. He couldn't write or read. So. Uh, my message to all human beings read about his biography and understand how did uh, he lived his life and he gave the message indeed, indeed. a very interesting mm. point you made i want to highlight to everyone prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was known within his community to be someone who was unlettered someone who did not go to learn how to read and write and yet he brought a quran something the world has never experienced before a unique piece of literature a unique genre which to this day people are baffled by how do you even imitate a single chapter like unto this quran and this indeed is the challenge of the quran if people are in doubt that this is not from god simple what they have to do is to bring a single chapter a single chapter and the smallest one i can think of is like about three sentences why is it so difficult because it's indeed structured in the way the creator has intended it to be unimitable from a human linguistic perspective so that's why even the arabs themselves they they, they have been sort of numbed and baffled as to you know how is it that the quran 
which came in their language and yet they're unable to match it. So this is a reminder to everyone. I mean, people, please go and study this subject in depth and you realize, you know, this is the miracle of the Prophet wasallam, which is going to be persistent until the end of this world because the Prophet being the final messenger, he needs a final everlasting miracle going along with him with this message and the Quran is just that. So Jazakallah khairan to Brother Hamad who's made this excellent point. I'm just going to move on to our guest who've been waiting in turns. Benjamin Seven, welcome to our show. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, I always have an, uh, a goal and aim, an aim to, to be short as possible to give the non-Muslims the possibility to learn something about this special prophet called Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I would just want to uh, make a comment how what touched my heart concerning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his character. Yeah. All the people who were against him, he would not have any hatred in his, in his heart. All the human beings, like the woman who kept um, throwing dirt in front of his door, and the one day the woman was not there. And what he's doing, he knocked on her door, opened the door, and saying, I just want to know what happened to you. You, uh, you missed the day. To, to, to throw your door dirt in front of my door. I was just concerned about you. What about you? And this kind of love, this kind of mercy, this light of compassion for all human beings, this is something universal and is a role model for all human beings and all human mankind. That's all. Jazakallah khairan for coming and joining our show and, and sharing your thoughts. And this is what we'd like to do today, uh, making slightly different and unique. Um, Muslims are more than welcome today to join this show today and express your views, your thoughts, your aspirations, your inspirations about the Prophet wasallam. why you indeed believe he is the last messenger of God, what has changed, how the world has changed, what has made you to follow him as the role model, the model to you know, mold your life, your character. Um, I'm just going to briefly go to uh, Mike and Mike, um, those of you who don't know, he has recently, you know, embraced Islam and joined the global family of Muslims and now is a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Mike, do you want to share your story about how you became Muslim and what led you to become a Muslim? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Um, I mean, I, I've been thinking about this. I've had about what about a week and a half to sort of really sort of get down to the, the main crux of it, and, and obviously relay here in this chat today. Um, <clears throat> I've been, I've been, I have been searching for God for about the past three years, um, but I know I can think back much, much further uh, in my life where I have, I have, you know prayed, I've spoken, I've tried to, to watch out for signs, things like that. But mainly I've, I've decided about three years ago, uh, roughly around the birth of my, my, my second child, um, that no, that I've, there's something missing. I, I'm, I'm very grateful for my life. Uh, I'm, I'm not unhappy. I just knew there was something deep down missing. And you can just feel that in your chest that you're just, you're just, you're missing something. And you know, my journey began and the, the main crux of the turning point for me was taking a bit of a pilgrimage uh, to Peru with the support of my, my wonderful wife. We're celebrating our 12th year anniversary tomorrow, um, you know, married 12 years. Uh, she, she allowed me to go to, um, to Peru last year, uh, literally around this time um, to do a bit of a pilgrimage to, to have absolute quiet uh, and an experience where I could just find my inner self first, who I am. And then that's when I really started listening more and thinking more deeply on things. And that's when I had my clarity about who I am as a person and what's missing. And I knew that missing thing was 100% God, as in Allah. Uh, and I started learning more about the different types of religions that are out there um 
and obviously, as you know, a couple of weeks back, um, I came to the park after watching quite a few of the Essie Dower uh, videos from um, Speaker's Corner, and I met up with Hashim and Ali, and I did my Shahada there. You know, there's, there's obviously lots of details, and I'm, I'm happy for people to ask questions about specific stuff, because obviously my life, I've not been living my life like a Muslim for 38 years. Uh, it's been a few weeks, so I'm a bit reluctant just to, just to openly speak because obviously it's not all halal. There's going to be some bits in it that are haram and I don't want to want to talk about them specifically unless you guys obviously want to speak about them. So by all means, if you've got specific things you want to ask or that's point like me in the direction to what you want to hear. That's right. Um, that's <laughs> fine. We, we, no one's going to ask detail. you to go into your lives where you don't want to share your thoughts. Of course, of course not. Hashem. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, Barakallah Feek, Brother Mike, mashallah, I mean, uh, on your journey of self-discovery, Allah has led you to the true religion. I mean, alhamdulillah. Yeah, this is something that we all are blessed with. You know, it's for many of us uh, who are born into the faith, we take it for granted, but I'm sure individuals like you who have discovered this faith um, in uh, coming from a different background, it's, it's, it's definitely a completely different, um, it's, it's on a different level altogether, how you uh, internalize the one true God and the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming from a completely different uh, tradition, background, um, religion, faith and so on. So I'm sure you will appreciate it much more than many of us born Muslims. Uh, but uh, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we praise Allah that he has guided you and guided all of us to the true faith. And we pray that Allah keeps us firm until the end because it is the end which, um, which is the main uh, what do you say, uh, the main test, it is how you, uh, it's in what state you die. It's, it's not what state you're in or I'm in, it's in what state we will die that will be counted on the day of judgment. So let's let's pray that uh, the Khatimun, uh, our end will be uh, something which will be upon this deen, upon Islam and upon the true faith. And we pray that all the Muslims have a good end and uh, an end which is, uh, Worship, with the worship and belief in Allah and His Rasul. Uh, I just wanted to point out one more thing with uh, Brother ben Benjamin who came earlier. He mentioned this hadith about <clears throat> about a Jewish lady who was throwing dirt in front of the Prophet's door and the Prophet uh, basically didn't do anything until one day when he saw that there's no dirt uh, in front of his house and then he went, uh, he was worried as to why that happened and he went to inquire about his neighbor. Uh, unfortunately, this is a fabricated hadith. Uh, many people use this without knowing about it. So once you know about it, please do not use it, even though this is something which is not uh, detrimental in the sense that it's not something that's going to harm the Prophet Sallallahu sta status. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you, uh, if you invent something which I have not mentioned, if I'm paraphrasing here, then it is, uh, those people should take their seat in hellfire, which means that you should not fabricate any hadiths or any narrations or any sayings uh, against me, which I have not specified or said, do not put, uh, do not say that this is the call of the Prophet Sallallahu or the narration. So yes, there are many things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is known as the mercy to mankind has done. For example, when he came with an army of 10,000 back to um, Mecca, his homeland where he was driven out of, where he was exiled from, he and his companions who were tortured, persecuted and uh, killed even, he actually had to leave Mecca to go to Medina. He had to live there for several years before he came back uh, as uh, with, with an army to conquer um, Mecca, which is his homeland, and to spread Islam there. This is because not only that he wanted Islam to be spread there, but he also had the opportunity to quash all his enemies, all those people who, who persecuted him, who killed his companions, who tortured them, and drove them away from the homeland, he had every right to take revenge on every one of them. However, how did he proceed? He did not do anything against them, but he forgave them and he welcomed them to Islam. So those people who wanted to come to Islam, they were free to come and they would be, they would be uh, uh, basically accepted with open arms. Those who did not want to, they would have to pay jizya and this is, they, could have, they could then live peacefully under the protections of the Muslims and the Muslim army and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
Barakallah fi Hashim for highlighting this, and this is indeed a very important point uh, to make, uh, because Prophet said very clearly, "Man kathba alayya mutaammidan, fal yatabawa maqadahu min al nar." Whosoever you know says something, invent something, lies about the Prophet, knowingly, mutaammidan, knowingly lies about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, let him find this place in hellfire. So we try our best not to say something about Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, which he didn't say. Um, so it's very important for us to go back to the authentic Quran and Sunnah. Authentic Quran, of course, authentic, authentic Sunnah, Mutahara, the purified Sunnah in which the scholars have classified which one's authentic and which one's not. Um, Mike, indeed, um, you've mentioned a very important point. Um, I want to just highlight and share with you and our Muslim brothers and sisters two oh. points here. One for you, Mike, specifically, and one for the Muslim brothers and sisters, so no one loses out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he has explained and to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever becomes a Muslim, all his or her previous sins are forgiven. So things that you have done in the past, which you consider to be something bad, even you, your heart, you know that they're wrong. <coughs> Allah has forgiven all of that. So you now, the moment you've become a Muslim, you open a clean slate. It's totally clean slate. You're like a newborn baby. And now you are in a new journey. And any good deeds that you have done in the past, they continue. SubhanAllah. So not just clean, but also a bonus already um, on your account. So there is nothing to be you know, despair of. And in fact, you know, you, you progress your journey, SubhanAllah, in, in, in Allah's path with knowing that Allah is forgiving all your past sins and you don't need to recourse back to them or even share them. In fact, to the Muslims now, Allah says, um, Surely good deeds wipes off bad deeds. That means if someone has done bad deeds, bad actions, all they need to do is repent and ask Allah to forgive sincerely, willingly, Come back to Allah in, in istighfar and repentance and try to do good deeds. The good deeds will wipe them, the, the bad deeds that you have done. And of course, if you do repentance as well, Allah will forgive you if you do that sincerely and make that intention not to do these things again. So Jazakallah khairan for bringing this point because this is something that, you know, you, you're bringing our points to our deen, our religion, which has become, you know, so clear to us that you know, we should not be left out from this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the mercy to you and mercy to us from our Rabb, Rabbul Alameen, Lord of all the worlds. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the topic today is the last prophet and messenger. I want to bring Muslims and non-Muslims to share their thoughts. Mustafa Firoz, you're next. Welcome to our show. Before I do that, sorry my brother, Ijaz is trying to um, make some points. Yeah, so you know, uh, I want to thank Brother Hashim and Brother Mansoor for uh, mentioning that that uh, hadith is actually fabricated. But alhamdulillah, we don't need to depend on that one. In fact, one of my most famous uh, narrations, the one that I love the most, uh, I'm going to read it for you guys. It's by uh, uh, reported by Abdullah ibn Amr. May Allah be pleased with him. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The most merci sorry, the merciful will be shown mercy by the most merciful." and God. So be merciful to those on the earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy upon you. Hadith ar rahma So basically, at least this hadith tells us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not tell us be merciful to only Muslims. He doesn't say be merciful only to the people that you like, but to be merciful to everyone. And if you are merciful towards everyone, Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, he will have mercy upon you. And in fact, uh, students of knowledge, when they first begin their hadith studies, this is traditionally one of the first narrations that they are taught. Hence why we believe that Islam is a religion or a deen of mercy in the first place. I just wanted to add that to Allahumma you. salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Um, Mustafa Firoz, salamu alaikum. Welcome to our show. Welcome, salam. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yep. loud and clear. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say that I've been a... Uh, these past seven months fighting between uh, Islam and uh, atheism and alhamdulillah after delving deep into philosophy for seven months so Islam seems to be the winning the winning side so um, I just wanted to say some stuff on regard with regards to the topic and maybe ask a question sure. so um, the famous orientalist you might know him as uh, William Montgomery Watt he was uh, he said um, to question the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him sincerity would raise more questions than it would solve so there was incidents where he would pray for hours at night, he would uh, be the first to um, engage against the enemy. 
he would um, there was an incident with the eclipse where the people where his infant uh, son had died, and uh, the people were saying it's because his son had died, and then he um, corrected their mistake and son said no, this is the signs of God, and someone who would who would be lying would um, say uh, oh yes, this is all because of me and uh, want worldly worldly gains, but obviously he didn't. So um, I also uh, wanted to ask one question um, with regards to um, this topic. Um, what do you? What's your opinion on um, you know Joseph Smith, the Mormon prophet? What do you think of him? Because he made like a similar question, um, a similar like um, thing in his uh, Book of Mormon, where he said produce something like it. And I was reading about it, and there was the only one translation of the Quran available at the time, and it's an exact um, copy from the Quran. So I was wondering if he's copied from there, or what's your take on him? Thank you, Jazakallah, for the question. And interesting thoughts. Before Ijaz answers this question, I just want to uh, explain a little bit. Someone's um, YouTube is on, but there's an echo going somewhere. Um, at one time, Muhammad, وسلم, his own son died, right? So his son passed away, Ibrahim. What happened was, as this death uh, was happening, the event, event happened, there was an eclipse. So if someone was a fake individual trying to fake that he was a prophet of God and so on, what better opportunity to tell the people, look, because of my son has died, you now have the moon, you know, you know, going having an eclipse. You can see even the, the reality around you, the cosmos is is agreeing with me. So I must be a prophet of God. But what did Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Investors say no, the sun and the moon, they don't, you know, you know, go down or up, they don't show this eclipse because of people's life or death. Um, so it has nothing to do with this event. And this, as, as Mustafa Rose is highlighting, is one of...